first comedian of the evening. Because he came all the way from the USA. He's like, I don't believe it. He probably lives in Amsterdam. <laughs> no, no. But he really, he comes from the USA. Um, and I want to give him a really warm welcome. So come on, put your hands together, please. Thanks so much. Keep going over here. <laughs> Latina power. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta play to your audience when it's all possible. You know, go China. Go uh, China. So <laughs> Tell her I said it. It's cool. We're working out perfectly. Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Socrates. I am an American. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's called the Peruvians, like, yeah, yeah. you know, that nobody, you know, because you all watch the news, right? <laughs> Ever watch the news? Not if you want to feel optimism. You know, if you like spontaneous drama, then hey, the news is definitely for you. <coughs> yeah, I've been living here now 14 years. I'm coming from America. I'm actually going to get my citizenship soon, or get approved. <laughs> you don't care if it's cool. <laughs> Everyone else is positive, but yeah, the king approved me and everything, so hey. Yeah. So I'm going to give up my American citizenship, so if there's any racists in the house, you want a place to go, I'm leaving a spot open. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ask me, have you read the news? I love you. See the news, yeah. That's the thing, it's like, you know, fascism is coming back now, it's like bell bottoms or something. Bell bottoms are really bad pants. Fascism, it's a bad version of politics. And it's become popular in the U.S. again, unfortunately. So I was kind of happy to move here, and it's like I saw that it's becoming popular in Argentina as well. That's why I'm glad to live here because it could never happen in the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What happened? I couldn't vote for the national parties. I always vote for the Green Party. Yeah, because nobody parties like the Green Party parties. And the tepid support that that always gets is very encouraging for the future. But I don't really worry about the, uh, the changing of the environment, you know, it's not really my concern because I'm 57, which is, <laughs> which is 75 in Dutch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is actually cool because I'm looking forward to becoming uh, 62, you know, because I'll be 26. It's weird though, Dutch is like, from an American's perspective, if you're not dyslexic, being here will make you at least partially dyslexic. <laughs> Because it's not just the numbers, you know, the E and the I thing. That doesn't work. You know, I before E, except after C, unless you're in the Netherlands, in which case, just don't even try. You know, like, I can't spell there. I'm just always using the EY version. And people kind of tell me I use the wrong one as opposed to I misspelled it. But even the dates, the dates are hard too, because I had a show on the 11th of December and another show on the 12th of November. Yeah. I couldn't tell them apart, you know? <laughs> I don't know why the Americans are so annoyingly backwards on things, but it's, it's, it's difficult, you know? And like the other time, too. 12 hours, a 24-hour clock, you know? It's like you're trying to get there at 1600, you know, 4 o'clock, and for some reason, like, I'll see, like, on the, on the Google, and end up being there two hours early, which is better than two hours late, you know? Of course, like the English people, are like half seven. They show up at what we call half eight. Like, where the hell were you? It's half seven, man. Because we consider half seven is 6.30. Yeah. Uh -huh. British say it's 7.30. <coughs> Do you know why? Because the British are wrong. <laughs> so I find living here is cool. It's a different kind of experience. You know, it stretches your brain. You know, and if you're like a racist fascist, it hurts. Like they have the bathroom for like, you know, women on the left, men on the right, right in the middle is either one. I always think of the American go, ah! So I like living here, you know, but it's differences. Like the language is a weird thing. I don't know if you've noticed it, but Dutch is not the same as English. <laughs> they use a lot of the same letters, you know. They just don't use them in all the same way. It's like Dutch cooking. Uses the same ingredients as a Greek guy cooking. Comes out different. <laughs> but like some of the words, like uh, the word glad when you're happy and glad, let people, hey, it's good, you know, it's good night, you know, glad and everything. In Dutch, glad is pronounced hot and it means slippery. Yeah, you're walking along and see a little sign, hey, glad, hey, woo! <laughs> Not glad anymore, are you? But when you see it now, you'll be glad that you know what it means. 
Like recently, I just got the uh, got another booster because I'm 57. <laughs> and I saw a little sign there, and there's Dutch people here. You can help me on the sign. The sign, the sign said basically, "Go uh, the vaccinati for the young, young of the world." So basically, give the vaccination for the young people of the world. Give it as a gift, a, a positive giving effect or act. And that was the word "chun," which is spelled G-U-N. I don't know if you know or not. But in English in America, chun is a very different, <laughs> different kind of word. A gun is, it definitely is a gift. You can use it. It's a gift that we'll keep on giving. But it's suddenly less positive, you know? That's like a big difference in culture, I think. Like in America, we had to come up with a word for mass shooting. I don't know if you know it or not, but that's four million people shot. You got shot with only three people. It's just a shooting. Nobody cares. But it's even better, they came up now, I saw they have mass killings. Yeah. Four more people get killed at a time. Yeah. Stepping up a bar. Yeah, you hadn't heard of it either, huh? As an American. Yeah, it's impressive, right? Yeah. Take it to the next level. And here in the Netherlands, they went with, like, you know, swaffling. <laughs> was the word of the year 2008, by the way. It means to smack yourself against something. Uh, women can do it, but they got to get a little bit closer. <laughs> Yeah, in, uh, in 2008, there was a guy in Taj Mahal, two Dutch guys were at the Taj Mahal, and one guy swapped with the Taj Mahal, and the other guy put it on video, and it went viral because there wasn't that many videos in 2008. <laughs> the Dutch love a good word, and they thought swapped well, hey, that's a great word, made it the word of the year in 2008. I moved here in March 2009, it was one of the first things they taught me. Uh, yeah, well, they didn't show it to me, but they told me the word. You know, they were proud of it at the time, very, very proud. Actually, my the favorite word that it offsets mass shootings or mass killings is the Dutch word chazalik, which is a word that's hard to define if you're American because it doesn't make sense. It's that wonderful warm evening that we make together as a group. You know, you take an empty room on a rainy night, when it gets dark at 4.30, we all have a really good time. Why? Because none of us took out a gun and shot anybody. <laughs> it's immediately on a like as soon as that happens. It's, it's a completely different kind of a world. So firstly, I love living here. I've never had a problem with it. I like living here. Like I said, I've been here 14 years and uh, trying to do as much as like I said, like trying to improve my Dutch where I can. And they say it's good to learn a language, and uh, I don't know if it's true or not. Sometimes it can hurt because uh, I learned the word "achreden," which unfortunately means to be slammed into. Because I was "achreden" going to scooter closer, which means I got slammed into by this asshole on the scooter. Yeah, the, uh, the, the lockdown had just ended. Remember we were all doing that self-reflection, staying home and meditating, getting in touch with ourselves? We called it COVID. You know, kind of missed that. You know, I could go for a break. I got some projects I never finished. You know, I started a bunch of things, but never got it done. But COVID ended, and we are kind of going back into the world. And I thought, hey, uh, my plan was to go to the sauna, you know? And God had a different plan. You know, I don't know if you know or not. God knows everything. God made everything. God has a plan for everything. And I don't know if you've noticed the world, but I think God's plan kind of sucks. <laughs> at least it's strange, at the very least. Because I was going to go to the sauna, get sweaty, and look at some naked people, which was going to be fun. I thought it'd be Cazella. <laughs> Good chance of swaffling. <laughs> but I didn't make it there because I came around the corner and there was a, a car on the bike path and also a scooter on the bike path. And I tried to explain to them what they were doing wrong because this is what's called, it's a, it's a feet's path, you know, and it's, it's for, not for your feet, it's for the bikes. But I didn't have time, so all I could say was, ah! And that went flying into the air, like a bird. Then I landed like an octopus. It broke half of my arms. It wasn't good. And I got to go to the house of Panasinkamo. Yeah. <laughs> sick of houses. And uh, when they took one look at my arm, they took the x-ray, they gave me this horrible reaction, which was, ah! You don't want to see a doctor do that. You know, I saw the x-ray too. I said, like, it's not me, is it? Ah. <laughs> then they offered me a shot of morphine. Yeah. Anybody have any shots of morphine? Any morphine people here? Can I get a shot? Anybody? No? <laughs> Morphine's great if they offer you it. First of all, you're not doing well. You know, they don't really <coughs> offer it. It's paracetamol or, you know, if it's morphine, woo, there's a reason for it. But you're morphine's dying. Huh? Well, not really dying at that point, but you're definitely not doing good, you know. It was definitely not my best of days, I'll tell you that much for sure. And, you know, the thing is this, God had this plan apparently to slowly kill me, but the doctors had a different plan. Was he wanted to buy a Jaguar? <laughs> and we work together. And I'm alive, and he's driving a Jaguar. So 
But the, the thing is, they started with nothing. They sent me home with conservative treatment. You ever heard this? They, they sent me home with this blue strap and told me it comes good. Yeah, it's a doctor thing, all therapists, they all thought it comes good. My butcher told me that too. But I believed him because he knows bones. So I ended up breaking my right, right shoulder and it's sort of half working again. And for eight months they did nothing but told me to stay home and keep practicing keeping it from freezing up. They didn't want me to have a frozen shoulder. You know, bad enough I had a broken shoulder. God, they wouldn't turn frozen. I heard it's a good movie, but I'm not sure. So they told me to keep exercising it because I can only raise it like this high and they told me to keep pushing it up and doing this with it. And I told them, you know, this isn't good socially. I'm an American. <laughs> My neighbor's giving me a bad attitude. Just say, hey, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. And after a while, I said to my doctor, Doc, it's not coming good. I cannot raise my arm higher than this. I have arm erectile dysfunction. And he said to me, hey, last in Pentecost? <laughs> Which is another useless Dutch saying. I don't know if you know this one or not. It rhymes. It means, oh, well, peanut butter. If somebody asked me to translate that to English, it doesn't. It doesn't, you know. Oopsie doopsie. I don't know. I've got no idea how to say it. You know, but they love a good rhyme. Like my favorite rhyming Dutch saying is, uh, is no get into coke. Yeah. Yeah, you know that one too, huh? You like a little no get into coke. I can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I mean, it means, if you don't know, it means fucking in the kitchen. Yeah, strange, isn't it? There's a Dutch saying for you. I don't know how to use no get into coke in context. I've asked. I've mentioned it to audiences. No one's ever said it. Use it this way. I mean, I guess on Tinder it has its uses. You know, I learned it from an Oma. Maybe she was being seductive. I don't really know. <laughs> I didn't get the hint that that's the case. But the only thing I've come up with is that if you combine Nogan and the Kogan with Halas and Pindakats, <laughs> you end up with some taste sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the government's there. Uh, I came for the weather, but I stayed for the food. <laughs> but that's the thing, so like time passes, you know what I mean, you try to be your best life, you, you try to live your best life forward, you know what I mean, and uh, I was optimistic because they did all the surgery on me, he got his down payment, and they told me four months later, they gave me the horrible words that you could, like, I want to hear these sounds, and you hear it sound, you're like, what's that mean? The word was necrotic. <laughs> yeah. The word Don't means die. to die. Necromancers, the kings of the dead. Yeah, it was my shoulder that was turning necrotic. It wasn't going into a Dungeon and Dragons face. And I had to have a second surgery, so they replaced the whole thing. So now I have a reverse prosthetic shoulder. Yeah. Where I had a ball, now I have a socket. Where I had a socket, now I have a ball. So arguably I have a trans shoulder. I'm not really sure. And then I thought, okay, that's, uh, that's God's plan. Screw me over, it's been a year and a half, hurt. All right. Let's go back to being Socrates again. Re-enter the world. Everything's good again. And then in August, I had a stroke. Wow. Yeah. Strokatis. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, figured it was a nice, beautiful day. You know the way we have weird weather here now? Like this summer? I've been here 14 years. We didn't do summer when I first moved here. One year, like in 2013 or 14, we didn't have a summer at all. Remember that? It was cold the whole damn year. Now it's 30 degrees in the summer. What the hell's going on? You know, it's become like Florida. I'm actually a Florida man. I, uh, I am from Florida, 21 years. Uh, I'm not an official Florida man because I never got in the papers. <laughs> you, know, you have to get caught and charged with something to become an official Florida man. I was an amateur Florida man. But it's similar. I mean, again, the people are different, you know, because Florida people can't find their way here. They're not that good at stuff, you know? We had hurricanes one year and uh, walked to the store, basically Albert High, it's called a Publix, and there was a line of people at the gas station. And trust me, there hasn't been gas for a while because there was just recently a hurricane. And the guy sitting in his car, sitting as they walked by, he said, is there gas? I said, no. Said, When's the gas coming? I don't know, not for a long, long time. Florida, if he had a gun, he would have shot me for the gas. <laughs> yeah. But in Florida, it's like we have the same concept of weather. We don't really do winters either, you know, and we have a long phase of summertime. But we have a different season that we call fire season. Yeah, fire season sucks. You think it's bad when you look outside and see it's raining out there. You take a peek and see it bursting into flame. You'd be wishing it was raining. Yeah. 
after fire season, everyone prays and prays for rain to come, and God finally listens and sends the hurricanes. <laughs> First one's great, it puts out the fire, but then the second one and the third comes, you're not thinking that's good anymore, you know what I mean? But here, of course, it rains all the time, and people like to complain about the rain, but it's just a little teeny bit of rain, you know what I mean? It's not a horrible rain, it won't kill you. Rarely it will kill you, occasionally. But that's a tree. Trees are dead. Yeah. But the Dutch rain, mm, my favorite Dutch word for rain is that little tiny rain in your face, you know, uh, call it miserable. Because it makes you so miserable. <laughs> the worst thing about miserable is if you are on fire, it's not going to help. <laughs> Burn it away. Mm, no, I'm damp. <laughs> I finally started wearing a hoodie. I never wore hoodies before. I finally got cold enough. I was like, okay, I'm freezing. Put on a hoodie. It's weird. It was a new experience for me. It was like a, a foreskin for my head. <laughs> you know? I'm American, so I never experience this one way or the other. You know? I'm talking to people, what the hell is that? I can't see who that is. You know? a dick and ass, what is that? Trying to get a glimpse out there. It's got a hole in it, like a condom. That's, that's what my dad told me anyway. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, so I've been trying to like trying to improve my life where if at all possible, you know what I mean? I've been trying to uh, Improve. I think that's what we all try to do in life is try to get better at things. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like one of the most positive things I try to tell people is that you have to maintain a work and life balance. You know, it's one of the American things. They don't know how to do this. You know what I mean? And uh, one of the most important things is you should never ever take your work home with you. Yeah, especially like if you're a kindergarten teacher. Because <laughs> that'll get you in a lot of trouble. That's all I'm saying. But. Uh, when I started doing comedy a little while ago, you know, I've been this about seven years for me, up here on stage, chatting with people, which is fun, it's good medicine for me, and occasionally, you know, I get a little morphine from the crowd. <laughs> it's good so long. And uh, I was told when I started doing this comedy thing that comedy's a lot like sex, and uh, the more I do it, the more I think that's true. Because I was really excited about coming here tonight. <laughs> now that I came, <laughs> I'm a little tired and sweaty. Self-conscious now, but you know what I mean? I'm lucky to get my energy and come back again soon. Merry Christmas, everybody. My name is Grant.